Hi, this is Joshua Hernandez from the Adventures of Gerard Dupree. I invite you to see the world through the piercing gray eyes of the sleuth of Old New Orleans. Noir is, it, it really is, um, it's very gray. It's not black and white. There's always something that's in between where you don't know exactly what is the truth that I know and what is the truth that has been proven and where do I meet that middle ground? That gray area is what a lot of things really uh, plays in part to why we have the characters we have and we have, um, you know, detective stories. That's one reason people listen in all the time is because they want to know what happens next. And in, in noir, it's more of, that's a common thread. It's not really something that happens one episode and the next episode, everything is easy. Every episode has its own share of, where do we go from here? Where do we go to move on forward? in the development of every character, and then of course in every story something is thrown differently than what we had before. Um, I probably have to say um, you can't help but love the main character of Gerard Dupree and uh, you know uh, the fact that he's really developed a lot um, and really you know we hear more of his story, we hear more of his background. He is the epitome of the noir sense. It's you know Everything he thought was right and justice is completely flipped upside down in certain circumstances. And even everything maybe he was against, he might have, might find out, maybe that's not true. Maybe I'm looking at this from a different point because now I'm not under what people have told me is right, but I'm making my own judgment. Uh, Brendan is wonderful as Dupree. Um, you know, I, I love his take on the character and just he's really shown that he cares about this project as well as we all have. Um, one of them that I love listening for, uh, especially um, because it's such a sweet character, but also a strong character, especially nowadays, you don't really have a lot of strong female characters, but I love Dottie. Um, I love listening for Stephanie because she's she's so sweet. She's so nurturing, but at the same time, she's, she's independent. She's very strong. And that's the kind of character that keeps Dupree in check is, you know, you can do this by yourself if you want to, but you always need help. And she's always the one that's saying, let me help you. Let me do it. You can't tell me I'm not going to. So this, this really pays tribute to um, what Louisiana is. It's uh, very culturally enriched, but also, um, you know, as a person who's from the state, I've seen some of the news reports, of course, you know, corrupt politicians or things that lead people to maybe think that Louisiana is backwards. Um, for me, the culture of Louisiana, the, the culture of, you know, the music, the, the, the arts aspect, um, you know, the fact that the director has taken so much time to really make sure that we pay tribute to a state that maybe doesn't get a tribute as much. You know, I may live here, but I'm proud to be from Louisiana. I would never uh, take that away from, 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 my, from my own experience as well as anyone else who may be from the state. Um, where you come from and what you know about the state, this program can definitely help people to really understand. This is a culture that you really shouldn't just bypass. There's history, there's mystery, but ultimately there's, there's just a whole big, not to sound cliche, but a whole melting pot of different things in that state that really brings out the culture in it, not only from the from the program, but also from some of the people that may be in it, um, and even the history that or the research that's gone into it as well. Even though radio seems to be a medium that kind of dwindles down little by little with technology, we ultimately are you know we still have listeners, we still have people who are you know the fact that these actors are doing this you know on their own free time and are willing to, you know, say that they would drop whatever they're doing to be here, that is, that is impressive. It's, it's really meaningful because that means that this is something that people really enjoy and even though maybe paid, not paid, whatever may, they may be in life, they get to do something they love to do in a medium that has almost been lost completely. Um, it's exciting for a third season. It's, uh, you know, it, it's really just... It, the story writing and the storytelling is so complex and so unique and different. You know, to me, for a third season, um, I'm I'm incredibly excited to see what happens in this season. You know, what happens with uh, more character development, um, but also the fact that more of the actors are still here. That they're, you know, it's it's a great pleasure. You know, uh, Stephanie Adams, Brendan Rogers, all of these great actors who are still, even even when they're doing other projects, they have time for this, and that's. You know, that really is something, because that's the sense of community that, especially here in Orlando, is really, you know, people are grasping a lot more. Of 
voice acting altogether is, you know, it's the power of your voice. You have to really rely on that to be your your uh, magic wand, if you will. So you have to help paint the picture. Because when you go to a theater, you can see the expression of their body language and their face and things that you can see. But when it's just the voice, we have to try and let people know, I'm angry, I'm sad, I'm happy, I'm scared, I'm panicked, I'm all of these things. And, you know, compared to stage theater, which most of the time you have to rely on just the audience has to know I'm doing it with every part of my being. But on voice acting and recordings, and of course anyone who's seen you know animated movies or cartoon shows knows that a lot of the times you can see the character's face, but if the voice doesn't match it, it ruins the whole thing. And that's that's kind of the trick of this this medium is that we have to actually know our voice has to tell everybody what's going on, and they have to visualize it. They have to know that we have to create the image um, because the image is only created by what we see in our minds. When you're, when you're preparing for a voiceover, a lot of the times you get the script, you kind of look over it, but in your mind, that's what you think it should sound like. But then when you get into the recording studio, there's something totally different that maybe you didn't think about. You don't know what to expect because the director may have a different vision than you, but you have to learn to compromise. And I think that radio, radio drama actually helps to really emphasize that compared to stage acting where they can just yell, you know, cut and let's try it again all the way through. This is bit by bit, line by line, piece by piece. It's a bigger puzzle, but the end result is always going to be something you know truly wonderful once you get to that point where you and the director are on the same page. Well, uh, I will honestly say with Bo, um, it really has been a pleasure um, working with him tremendously because the first time I ever met him, um, that's probably one of my favorite stories, I was only supposed to record like one or two characters, but then you know, we got to talking. We're both from the South. We're both um, heavily Southern gentlemen. So that's one of those things that we, you know, just agreed upon. And to me, it was one of those things where he respected it enough to where it's not a joke. It's not something that you make fun of. This is actually trying to respect a culture. And, you know, oddly enough, being one of the only people in the, in the cast from Louisiana, it's one of those things that I don't think I played a Louisiana character until maybe season two, maybe, yeah, season two was, uh, was one of them. And, but all the same, it was, uh, you know, I, I enjoy working with him. He pushes you. He really helps you to think outside the box, which is something that a lot of actors don't like to do. They don't like to think past what they were trained to do, or maybe even, you know, some people try to improv and it just goes in the wrong direction. And for me, I, you know, as the, as the, as just mostly the actor, your opinion doesn't necessarily go as far as what the director wants it to go. But then whenever they ask you, what do you think? And you give their opinion and you, it almost, it almost became like a, like I was an assistant director for one episode where I'm helping a, a gentleman really find a Southern side, which is sometimes hard to do for people. But, you know, Shelly did a great job, um, you know, and we, you know, we communicated with him on a great basis. And that's what's really great about working with this whole team, not just one person in particular, but everybody's open for interpretation. They're open for listening. They're open to take criticism and actually roll with it. They're not just, you know, oh, well, that's that's your opinion. It's like, no, this is something we wanted all to work together. Bo is one of those that there's never a dull conversation. I can honestly say there's never any moment where you feel like you're not going to talk about something you enjoy. And that is, you know, not only as a director, but as a friend in general, there's no, there's no person really that, you know, you can, you can honestly see if you, if you spend just five minutes with them, you can see why all these actors, all these people keep coming back because we enjoy the company, but we also enjoy the material. And that's, I think most actors forget about that. Some people, it's just a job, but for us, this is a, not really a guilty pleasure, but it's, it's something that we enjoy doing because it's a labor of love for us. It's a labor of love for the material. And also in my case, a labor of love and tribute to my state. With the season three, I'm looking to hear, you know, years from now, um, season 10, you know, season, you know, however long we can keep it going. You know, for a project for me that is close to home, it really means something and it really enhances that feeling that I'm part of something bigger than just another project. This is, you know, a little piece, little piece of me that comes with this, with the project as well as everybody else.
Thank you so much for watching the video, and also thank you for our listeners, old and new, as you continue to follow the program. If you'd like to stop by our store and support our cause, you can go to nolanoir.com, look at some of our lovely merchandise here, as well as listen to old episodes and even the new ones on the way. Just visit this website here, and we'll hear from you real soon. Just...